Hey everybody, welcome to another one of Chris's Bee Reviews. I got a special guest here. His name is Al Stoner. I've known the guy since I was four years old, so we go way back. Way, uh, way back. Way back. <laughs> All right, so we're going to be drinking the Witchcraft uh, beer from the Witchwood Brewery in the United Kingdom. It's a 4.7% ABV at 500 milliliters. Did I screw up the oh, 4.5% ABV? Just like all the other uh, Witchwood breweries, we got a, a witch on a broomstick. And uh, that's that. The only reason why. Uh, oh, this one does have a pentagram. Yes, this one is cooler because it has a pentagram. I wanted to mention that, but uh, I forgot. This is also considered a blonde beer. Um, we like blondes. We do like blondes, and in German, uh, they call them Hef. Weizen beers. So, uh, Hef Weizen beers. Although sorry. I don't recommend calling any blanche, you know, Hef. No. It no. Would go over well. <laughs> that's, that's really true, actually. It says Brewers of Character. Uh, it also says that this is thrice hopped for flavor. So, we got three different kinds of uh, hops in this handcrafted beer here. It, uh, it was also brewed in Oxfordshire. You want to read the back? Well, witchcraft beer is uh, another art, it's a seductive recipe with three hops and three choices of malts. They're going to tempt and charm you with a wonderfully refreshing, aromatic, dry blonde beer. Now, I'm a big blonde beer fan, as well as the women. The beers are very easygoing, and I like them. Cool. So, hopefully this will uh, hold up. And I must say, you know, the I did not like anything coming out of the Witchwood Brewery until the holidays, which they came out with the Witchcraft, the Bah Humbug, and uh, the King Goblin. King before that, I was drinking this guy, Hobgoblin. <laughs> and I'll tell you now, it's like the king is the king, and this is just hobo beer. You know what would be hard for you to swallow? The fact that the Hobgoblin is... Tastes better at room temperature. Yeah, it's 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 hard to drink beer at room temperature. I'm just uh, it is. It I'm is. too Canadian for that. Room temperature is minus forty when I'm sitting in my ice shack fishing with uh, my beer. I got you. I don't know don't if taste I taste good at that temperature. It's just not good for drinking. Got a witch hunter broomstick here. Alistair's correct. Let's see how she tastes. I'm only using my glass because it's smaller, so I try to fill up my small glass, and uh, that's how it's easier for me to keep track of how much to put in his glass. He's got the cool glass, the coolest glass of them all. That is a pretty badass glass. You know what? Out of all the years that they've released a glass, the year that I got this glass, it was the last glass on the shelf, and it was the coolest picture. <laughs> that, fight, that that little cool guy? The little hobgoblin with his axe? He's, he's, he's not on... Any any other uh, pint glass of theirs? Hmm. Much lighter than the other brews. Oh, much lighter, but it's a blonde. It looks like a blonde. It does. It does look like a blonde. It smells like a blonde. Nothing noteworthy. Uh, you know what? I'm picking on a little bit of that. I know. I, I know this sounds ridiculous, but I'm picking up on that English ale aroma. Yeah, but I think that's because uh, these beers were brewed in England. Okay. Cool. Definitely pure white, pure white head. Like you can't, you yeah. can't. That's like undeniable. It's just absolutely white, small, medium bubbles. Very mild carbonation flowing through the beer. That's about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you poured a Canadian or, you know, it something. definitely looks like a, a general, general blonde domestic. Like, uh, you know what? I just live it, next to the. Amsterdam Brewery, and they had some pretty good blondes there. The one thing that I, I, I'll tell you, though, that is different from your average blonde or Hefeweizen beer is that they they tend to look unfiltered and very hazy looking. But this beer actually is ultimately transparent. I can see it's the, the not image hazy at all. It's, it's very clear. So, so I don't think we're going to be picking up on any of those fruity, you know, Hefeweizen type of flavors that you normally get. So this is going to be different. I don't know about uh, German blonde beer, but most of the blonde beer I have doesn't have any fruit in it at all. Mm. 
I mean more of like a floral taste, kind of, you know? Yeah. That's what I meant to say. But, uh, I don't know. This one's kind of like a tie between the Bah Humbug. And it really has a strong English ale taste to it, which is usually something that I'm not happy about. No, but they cover it well. They it's do. a decent beer. They do. Again, I'm going to label this as a chugging beer. It goes down really smooth. Um, I can't see somebody just sipping at it and enjoying it, you know, sip for sip. It's, you, you well, take again, it. it's 4.5%, so... Yep, that's very true. <laughs> you know what? Uh, for a 4.5% beer, it actually has a lot of character to it, which is something that I can say. Mm-hmm. Mm. I don't know. Which one did you like the best out of the three of the kings, though? Out of our uh, marathon of Witchwood Brewery reviews, the king is the best. The king is king. That's for sure. That's absolutely for sure. The king um, is king. But I think this is a little better than the Bah Humbug. Yeah. But I might be saying that because I was expecting a lot more for a Bah Humbug beer that's only brewed for like Christmas and, you know. That's true. It's supposed to have cinnamon and remind you of, uh, you know, Christmas dinner. This one doesn't have any pretentiousness. It just says we're going to seduce you, which is what every other beer says. Yeah. They use bikini-clad chicks instead of pentagrams, but whatever. I'm easy. I definitely can't agree with the seduction point. I mean, this doesn't bring me into anything. doesn't make me think like, ah, uh, you know. No, it's an average beer. I just give it a little bit better than the uh, the Bah Humbug because Bah Humbug seemed a little pretentious on the bottle with his, uh, you know. You know what? Uh, I might have to say that I think that this one is just a little bit worse than the Bah Humbug in my opinion. I mean, like, I know what you're trying to say about the Bah, the bah Humbug. You know, there was the hype and then there versus the deliverance, right? But I feel like it had, like, just a little bit more flavor and body to it than this one does. Just a little bit. Like, you, you, before you rated the last one like 5 out of 10, I rated the last one 6 out of 10. This one I'd rate 5 out of 10. I'm, I'm only giving this a 5.5 because it's only slightly better. Okay. The only reason it's better is because it wasn't pretentious about it. Okay. And we both agree that the Hobgoblin is probably a 4 out of 10 in our books. So 4 out of 10, yeah. That's what we said earlier, right? I would say it's slightly worse than Canadian, and I would give Canadian 3.5. I'd give the Hobgoblin a solid 3. You know what, though? If I had to choose between, like, a 2-4 of Hobgoblin and a 2-4 of Canadian, I'd probably still go with the Hobgoblin. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've just had Canadian so many freaking times that, <laughs> that you know, I, I think I could learn to love Hobgoblin versus I've had Canadian over and over and over. <laughs> I've learned to love Canadian. But then the Americans bought our brewery. It's no longer Canadian. So I stopped drinking. That I didn't know. Yeah, I stopped drinking Canadian vehemently. Did you know that Budweiser is actually a rice beer? Yes. And it can be brewed anywhere across the world. Actually, it can be brewed with uh, zero variance. So it tastes the same anywhere in the world. Because, you know, rice is rice. Exactly. Whereas when you talking about wheat and hops and all the other ingredients, well, wheat grown anywhere else in the world is going to taste different because different soil pH and yep. whatever else. You know what would be cool? Imagine Budweiser came out with like a dark rice version. They couldn't do it. Well, they could use dark rice, but it, I don't know if it would taste any different. It's true. Well, there um, you go, Anheuser Busch. There's your <laughs> challenge. Quit with the white rice and let's get some uh, dark rice uh, Budweiser. What's with the racism? Yeah. <sighs> Wait a minute. Gotta give flavor. <laughs> Wait, I said flavor when I meant to say. Uh, no, no, flavor's good. Flavor's good. I've clearly had a several beer. Well, the next on to one, the next review. The next review is going to be even better. Oh, yes. Yeah. All right, so what did you rate this one? I gave it a point five better. Yeah, you but did. It's about the same. I, as, got, uh, I gave it a five. You gave it a five point five yeah. out, out of ten. Um, it's a very average good beer. 
sucks it only comes out again seasonally, but they don't have this big guy and all the Christmas hype, so I hate Christmas. And if you're going to have a, a beer about hating Christmas, it better be damn good. Exactly. And you got to taste the spices, which is exactly, yeah. what, exactly what we're going to get to with the next brew. All, all right. right. All right, people. Thanks for joining us on another one of Chris's beer reviews. Thanks Miles to Stoner. special guest here. Don't drink and drive, but drink responsibly because that's what we do.